Hi, this is Lit with Chris, and in this video, I'll be looking at how to respond to an unseen work of art. This will be particularly useful to you if you are a language and literature student who's not that familiar with art as a genre, but know that it might come up in the paper one exam. If you'd like to take the text that I use in this video and do some independent study yourself, then you'll be able to find it linked in the notes below. For this particular video, I am looking at the art piece called Girls Up For Grabs by Eva Yushkevich from 2010. Now, the very first thing that you should do with the text in paper one is identify what it wants us to comment on in the question. In this question, how does the artist effectively establish a visual experience for the viewer through their choices? The two things that stand out to me are visual experience, and choices. These questions can often be problematic as even if you have experience studying art or have looked at some examples in class, the language used by the IB may not necessarily match that from your lessons, meaning you need to take some time to unpack what these terms mean. Visual experience to me means the emotions I may feel when I'm looking at the painting. An experience can be something that fills us with good or bad emotions. So I suppose I'm supposed to comment on the specific type of reaction that I get. Similarly, I suppose an experience can teach us something. So perhaps the examiner also wants me to comment on a message or idea that the artist is communicating to me. The second term, choices, is quite nice. It's not overly specific, such as focusing on one particular type of technique, which can happen in paper one. And consequently, I'm free to talk about whatever techniques I know from this particular text type. Confident that I know more or less what the question wants, I can now go about analyzing the art. Whilst not an art expert, there are a number of devices I know that can be applied to visually heavy text types like this one. The first one would be composition. So composition refers to the way in which all the elements of the piece are arranged in relation to each other. In other words, is there symmetry and harmony or is there contrast and clashes? And on first inspection, there does seem to be a certain amount of symmetry in the subjects. They're all sitting in, in, in rows, like one row and then another row, um, one behind the other. But despite this, the longer I look, the more I start to see inconsistencies and clashes. The heights of the girls in the front are slightly out of line, as are their respective postures. Added to this is the relatively wide divide between this subject and this subject creating a chasm and therefore affecting the overall balance of the piece. Immediately, in terms of my feelings looking at the piece, I can note down a sense of unease or discomfort. Due to the A symmetry, something just doesn't feel quite right. In addition to composition, we might like to talk about colour. The overriding colour in this piece is blues and blacks, which lends a gloomy, sad, ominous feeling to the piece. There are brighter colours, such as the reds, but they seem to be associated with pain or discomfort or danger uh, depending on which particular subject that you're looking at, rather than any more positive connotations that we would have with red. Lastly, we have, lastly, we do also have this pink of the dress uh, here. This undoubtedly should bring some degree of joy or levity to the piece, but it actually only serves to highlight the darkness around it, hence heightening the gloom-filled atmosphere. So pink creates greater contrast. Moving on from uh, colour, the next we can talk about is light. Now light, ordinarily you may associate this more with photography, but painters can also manipulate their way in a way as to convey a time of day or setting for their piece. In this case, the light is low, 
dim. These are good words to describe it. Casting very little exposure on where the girls are or exactly what is happening. Such anonymity or, or doubt may proliferate the earlier feelings of unease we mentioned because we're just not sure what's going on with these seemingly vulnerable young people. One very popular device that is used with visual texts is visual narrative. This is where a static image has been constructed in such a way as to convey a vivid or clear story or situation for the viewers. In this case, the painting seems resonant of a picture being taken, either at school or a party or a family get-together. And whilst we would expect such a situation to prompt smiles, laughter or, or some show of outward joy, the subjects seem far from content in their current situation. At some point, it may also be wise to consider the title of the piece, Girls Up For Grabs, which may deepen our concern given the phrase's connotation of something being readily available for consumption. There is also the option of discussing framing, uh, but before I do that, I'm gonna write down visual narrative, party, Class photo? Unclear. There is the idea of framing that we can talk about as well. So framing allows us to talk about where things have been placed in the foreground, the middle ground, and the background, and it operates in a similar way to composition. Uh, in this painting, much of the background is actually obscured. So I could write down obscured background. Um, I could perhaps look at the similarities of the front row or foreground and the back row or background if I believe there were noticeable similarities or differences. Um, but I think then we can come to the subjects themselves. So while some photos or works of art may only have one or two subjects, we are blessed here with the fact that there are eight different people to look at and analyze in terms of their respective uh, contribution to, to the painting. And within those subjects, we can also talk about the gaze, where they're looking, their facial expressions and or their posture and how that relates to the, the question that we've been given. So the first girl who we've already mentioned as part of our comment about the pink dress, her posture shows to be, she seems to be quite shy or polite, uh, like kind of stereotypically, quite girly or, or feminine um, in, in a traditional or outdated way, um, uh, just because of the way that, that her hands are. And similarly, her face is kind of turned away as well in, in, in a relatively shy um, manner. But her face also seems to be covered with quite an excessive amount of makeup, which to me seems inappropriate for someone so young. Um, however, looking closer, her face is also dotted with what could be physical abnormalities. Uh, disease or maybe some form of ailment suggesting that maybe the makeup could be designed to be covering something she doesn't want other people to see. Uh, covering it up in some way. This motif of facial disfigurement is continued in the girl next to her. Her right cheek seems to be, um, seems to have like a mold like affliction on it, which might otherwise be a sign of physical abuse. Her clothes are similarly feminine, um, almost as if she's going to, to a party or, or a fancy occasion, but her stern facial expression and uh, unusual skin coloring combine to convey an unbalanced and, and confusing presence. So I would be noting these down around the outside, stern, facial, expression, uh, disfigurements, and such. Uh, if we then move on to uh, the next uh, subject, now this young girl to me resembles uh, Freddy Krueger, so for anyone who doesn't um, have that particular um, allusion to to mind. He, he was a protagonist in a famous horror film called Nightmare on Elm Street. And like Kruger, this, this subject has what looks to be a deeply painful scar or rash on her face and unsettling black eyes, which 
much like her fellow subjects, just stare out and look almost challengingly, directly at us, the viewers. Um, the gaze on the, the, the final girl in the front row is similarly disquieting, but perhaps for different reasons. Whilst we might question why or how the preceding three received the damage to their face, this subject seems relatively joyful or happy with a loose smile playing across her face. On the other hand, the fact that she looks like she's covered in dirt also links to a feeling of disregard or trauma, which is becoming a consistent theme amongst the different subjects. Added to this are the bunny ears and animal print leotard that she's wearing. And when we look at it or when we consider it alongside the Freddy Krueger outfit and Batman mask in the back row, maybe we stop to consider whether there's a fancy dress element to this party yet. With not everyone's clothes consistent with such a theory, it creates yet more confusion and concern into the air. So I'm going to write down, is this fancy dress or not? Um, we then uh, move to the, the, the back row of girls and they are decidedly more alike, I would say, than the front row. Um, but they're similarly... Um, obscured, sinister, whatever words you care uh, to use. They're all dressed in blue and they all have faces that seem you know, relatively dark or relatively hidden due to the light uh, that's available in this particular scene. Um, the girl, this girl particularly, uh, I would say, creates a feeling of foreboding, giving her lowered face and slight grin towards the viewer, whilst the subject in the middle seems to have been painted with a slightly brighter light on her face, but this only serves to highlight her misshapen teeth and beady eyes that continue our theme of facial distortion. And if we are to assume that these are girls, given the title, then we may argue that this subject is the most androgynous of the group. Her hair, her hair is barely visible, facial expressions are masked in the dark, and producing a further unsettling sense and leaving us wondering how is this person feeling and what exactly are they doing here? Lastly, it would be remiss not to talk about this figure resembling Batman, uh, given the asymmetry of their position, just how out of place they seem in contrast to everyone else. Um, they're presented as an outsider or a part in some way, purely because of what they're wearing and where they're standing. And to me, it's not beyond the bounds of possibility that this could in fact be a male character, given the predatory connotations of both the mask, its colour, and the bat as an animal. Such a consideration gives further weight to the title, girls up for grabs, and we may be led to wonder what role this person has to play in the girl's apparent availability. So, through the annotations that you can now see, I can now return to my initial notes on the question and try to develop the beginnings of a thesis. Now, in terms of emotions or reactions, I have to say that the painting leaves me feeling a sense of unease, a sense of dread, concern, and perhaps confusion. I just don't know what's going on with these particular characters and it, it makes me feel anxious. Um, the message or the idea to me is, is slightly more tricky. I'm not entirely sure, but if I had to offer something, um, I suppose there could be something said about the beauty standards expected of women in society. We do have indications or symbolism of, of, of beauty in a few places and it being subverted. Alternatively, if we look away from beauty, there may also be an element of violence or abuse towards women that we're perhaps overlooking as a society or uh, the society in which this painting was created. With this as my thesis, I can now consider what might be the most viable structure for my analysis. Now, I typically do this on uh, the same piece of paper, but for the purposes of the video, I've done it here. Um, and in my opinion, it's best to map out options for this. Uh, one that is devices driven, so one that has four, three or four paragraphs on devices, and one that has three or four concepts. This way you can consider which approach will yield the widest relevant discussion 
without the possibility of repeating yourself. From there, I'd go on to write six paragraphs, one for the introduction, one for the conclusion, and four body paragraphs to defend and develop my thesis. Don't forget, if you do want some independent practice or access to the text I used in this video, you'll find it linked in the notes below. If you found this video useful or the text that I used in it, then please consider liking and subscribing via the buttons below. That's all for this time. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Goodbye.